the PowerPoint now? Yes. Yeah, okay. I hope the connection is okay because sometimes my Wi-Fi uh, doesn't work that well. So I'm sorry if sometimes maybe my uh, that I'm suddenly disappear from the <laughs> from the screen. Uh, sorry for that connection. So uh, I would like to speak a bit about populist movement, but I'm aware that we only have like one hour meeting, one hour session. So it is not possible to speak a lot of things about populism. So when you heard about the word populism, I bet that you will assume that populism is a kind of ideology like we already knew uh, compared to socialism or capitalism. But there are also uh, some thinkers who think that populism is not just an ideology or maybe it is more appropriate to see populism as an intellectual strategy. So uh, I will keep the discussion open. I will not try to clarify any what populism is. But I would like to see that the populist as a word or as a terminology can be an ideology, but it is also can be regarded as an intellectual strategy, or in particular, it can be also comprehended as a political strategy. So I, uh, I'm aware that we have time limitation. So that's why I try to give you only one specific question that we maybe can discuss uh, during the session. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. So I would like you to think or to reflect about uh, these specific questions because there are many questions about what populism is. Can you still hear my voice? Just to make sure. Hello? Hello, yes. Hello, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes okay. Yeah. Hear you. Nice. Okay. So there, there is one specific question that I would like to address uh, during our discussion today. So the question is very simple, which you can see uh, from the PowerPoint. Who are the people actually, when we are talking about the people? So when you saw uh, the three videos or when you read any literature about populism, they will speak a lot about the people. But now I would like to contemplate and I would like to ask you all to contemplate about what uh we understand actually about the people who are they so when i ask uh you uh for example nur husnina who are the people what do you have in mind when i say the word the people who would you, who would you like to identify when i ask you about who the people are maybe husnina do you have something in your mind the word the people itself what uh what does the word refer to I think uh, based on the video that I have watched, mm -hmm. people means like a person that influences others. Mm. Okay, nice. <laughs> like politician. Mm. So they have power to influence the majority. Okay. So they have power to influence the majority. Okay, that's a, that's a very good uh, point. Okay, uh, Maud, do you have any, any anything in your mind about uh, who do you think? Uh, the people are. Maybe you can uh, use your specific cultural background because I'm aware that you are, for, uh, you are from France and I think you have a long history of democracy because we all know about the France Revolution when the people try to take the power and try to confront uh, the state who consider as uh, authoritarian and the people want to get their right and want to liberate themselves from yeah from the regime. So maybe you have uh, something specific from your cultural background when you talk about the people. I'm not really good Would at you... that. Sorry. It's okay. So when in in your in your mind, who who do you think uh, when when we are talking about uh, the people? If Is I it the citizen? Maybe Sorry. I yeah, come It's okay. Yeah, yeah you can. So uh, maybe. In... When we talk about the people uh, mm. in the, uh, this case, it's uh, working places, maybe mm -hmm. the, this kind of people who are working hard and uh, mm. have sometimes the feeling that uh, they are working too hard and maybe all the money is going for uh, the rich people and not for them. Maybe that's the kind mm. of people that uh, are the um, aim, you know, um, are aimed by the 
the people who who critic who are doing the critic the criticisms. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's uh, that at uh, something to Husnina already said about who the people are. So, uh, in terms of the people, there are a taken for granted assumption about the word the people. First of all, the people are neither a biological essence nor a universally accepted or constituted social units because uh, the term the people itself, uh, sorry, see, the, the term itself is politically defined or in other words, the people are actually a political subject. So when we are talking about populism, it is a way how uh, this movement or this ideology try to gain power to identify or to define who they consider as the people. Because the, this term is highly important uh, for populist uh, activists or populist actors. So uh, it is important to investigating uh, how the people is of great importance to the study of multiculturalism because we need to find what is the nexus uh, between the people, populism, and also the multiculturalism. First of all, when we talk about the people, we need to be aware that it implies the, uh, the categorization. It implies the system of classification because it also like refer to some uh, unseen power hierarchy that make possible for the domination or maybe for discrimination uh, to happen. Because the people is not something that can be equally treated based on their social status. So when I talk about the people, there are a diverse category about who the people are. We can imagine the people as a woman. We can imagine them as a man. We can imagine uh, them uh, coming from a certain social strata or status. We can also trying to figure out what their ethnicity may be, what are their religion. So it is quite hard to have a definite definition about the people because there are two broad categories that can be uh, applied and can be accepted uh, to these specific terms. So that's why how to define who the people are is highly important for the study of populism because that's where uh, the system of belief or that's where the value about populism start because they try to define who the people are in order to achieve their goal. So what are their goals actually? I will uh, continue my slide. So as you can see, when we try to understand the people, uh, the populism uh, employ the structure way of thinking actually by put the term the people as opposed to the elites. So when we are talking about the people, they are trying to build this binary opposition that the people should be put as opposed to what we, uh, uh, what we consider as the elites. Because the people here actually is not just the people. The people is the virtuous people. It's the ordinary people. It's the common people. So when we are talking about who the elite is, so we can say uh, at the same time that the elite is in different category uh, as the people. Why? They cannot be put under the same category because the elite is not the virtuous people, because the elite is not the common people, it's not the ordinary people. But the elite here is the corrupted elites. So uh, populism is built uh, upon this foundation, which is the people versus the elites. Who are them? They are the virtuous people versus the corrupt elites. So this is the basic foundation. So based on this uh, foundation, then I will pursue my, uh, I will proceed my analysis to, to the video that we already like seen before. There are uh, three maybe uh, contexts that we would like to understand why the populist uh, is becoming a new trend a new movement, even though it's not tourism. So when we are talking about populism in the context of United States, uh, they have a tendency to take an aggressive and also isolation stance by 
like uh, building the boundaries by building the borders. They also like have a tendency to include allies to build stereotype against the immigrants, also against uh, the refugees. They try to separate I from you, or maybe in a plural, plural form, they try to separate us from them. So that's why Donald Trump always said that uh, I will America great again. He strongly assert uh, the sentence or the assumption that America is we, and we need to make ourselves great again compared to other country. So this kind of narrative is very strong in populism because we already and we need to make the boundary between friend and enemy. Who are we and who are there? It also uh, happening in Europe where the populist movement also highly associated with anti-migrant tendency. And also uh, they mostly addresses issue in terms of how the uncertainty of the future will affect uh, the life of the common people, usually is the working class uh, people. Because the risks and also the uncertainties of the future, it is something that can incite uh, fear. It incites uh, the anxiety. The anxiety. So it is important to to uh, to form a struggle on behalf of the working class or form a struggle of behalf of the ordinary people to against any policy posed by the government that doesn't take the majority as the priority. Like uh, Sufi that, uh, Arif said that it is important to take the majority uh, interest as the biggest or the largest interest uh, of the country. So what the majority want that should be taken as a priority for that country. So it, it is also adapted in Latin America, especially the populist movement there, uh, trying to build the narrative of anti-imperialism. They're trying to uh, set up uh, the boundary between the national interests and also the foreign powers. They try to give back uh, the power to the citizen, to the native. They are trying to eliminate uh, the influence and also the intervention of foreign powers to economics and also to, po to politics. So from this three different uh, background, three different uh, region, we can see that there are certain similarity that characterize what populism are. First of all, all, I will repeat again that it is uh, the movement that put the virtue of the simple people, of the common people, who are the overwhelming majority, and they try to uh, respect the collective traditions in order to make their position secured in the uh, nation's uh, politics. So, I think it is interesting to see another discourse of populism, which is actually the consequence of what we maybe already known and heard before, which is the Arab Spring. So when I say the Arab Spring, is there any one of you who already familiar with the term Arab Spring? Yes, yes from the video. Yes. Yeah, from the video. Okay, uh, what what do you have uh, in mind when you see the video about the, the Arab Spring? It's uh, for because uh, I think uh, the protest uh, between the society and the elite, which is uh, Muhammad uh, Gaddafi. Okay, yeah, from Libya and also for Egypt in Egypt also and also Tunisia and Syria. So. Uh, on the screen, you, you will see the Facebook uh, page. And the Facebook page is titled, We Are All Khaled. Uh, sorry, I cannot see the Sorry. Wait. Can you uh, read the whole uh, slide? Because sometimes my slide doesn't work. OK. Yes. From the slide, you can see it. From the slide, you can see that this is the Facebook group. And the Facebook group. Uh, 
is a name we are all Khaled Said. So this is uh, that uh, this is the Facebook group that actually initiated the Arab Spring in Egypt. So the Egyptian Arab Spring started from this uh, Facebook group. What this Facebook group is about was well actually uh, there, there there was an event when a boy named Khaled Said and he was beaten uh, to death by two policemen. And at that time there there were witnesses who saw the incidents and one of them uh, decided to start the Facebook the Facebook group, uh, the one that you already saw uh, from the PowerPoint. And from the Facebook group, then it sparked to generate uh, sympathizan, to generate empathy from other Egyptian people. Why? Because Khaled Said becomes the symbol of Egyptian movement or Egyptian struggle. Why? Because in Egyptian, Khaled Said actually before the incident, uh, based on the investigation, he was uh, said to be uh, to be someone who report the policeman because he have a suspicion that the policeman is involved with uh, some kind of conspiracy with the dealer with the drug dealer. So he's the one who, who reported the policeman and saying that there are a corruption in, in the police uh, institution in the Egypt. And maybe like days after the report uh, submitted, uh, maybe to the, to the court, he was uh, beaten uh, to death uh, by, the police, uh, by the policeman. And it sparked anger in all the Egypt and people start to have the sentiment and also the emotion that we are feeling that there is injustice, injustice and also there is a social economic imbalance in Egyptian. And we need to start making a change. We need to uh, in, initiate a revolution. We need to, to, we need to take down the regime, the corrupt regime. So that's why uh, there are people, not only people, but massive people who are organized and also mobilized through the digital platform, which is Facebook and also Twitter, and they are motivated to go to the street and also to marching and asking to government to uh, to, to 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 end uh, the authoritarian uh, regime. So it happens not only in Egypt, but also in Tunisia, also in Syria, also in uh, several countries in Arab. So that's why uh, the people power is what uh, overthrow the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy and also what uh, take down, uh, sorry, what took down uh, the authoritarian uh, regime there. All right. Sorry. Uh, I need to change the slide first. Hmm. Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, wait, uh, I need to change the slide, but I cannot do this. Okay. So, uh, the, the, uh, there is one slogan that is used during the Arab Spring, which is people want to bring down the regime. So a broad spectrum of protestor, uh, labor from labor and also a youth activists to feminists and also individual members of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they, they, they agreed uh, and they are marching together with one spirit that we are the people want to bring down the regime. So again, uh, we can see that the word the people is used as uh, not only a slogan, but this is like the driving force. This is like the important driving force for the mobilization to take place. Because when you 
do something on behalf of the people, then it will make sense that this is not only one people who desire for something. This is not only the wish of one specific people, but this is uh, the longing for a collective of collective, uh, yeah, collective community that we are called as the people. So this is important because when we heard about uh, the word the people, we always assume that it includes and it comprises the whole society. So when I speak about the Indonesian people, then I assume that when I speak about Indonesian people, then it comprises the whole society. Sometimes I forget that there is no such a whole society actually when we come to the discourse of the people because it always like give priority to only one specific groups of people. But it is like uh, made yeah, to coming out or to become apparent that this is like what people want, the whole society want. But actually we need to criticize, uh, is it really what people want and which people that we're actually talking about? In terms of the Arab Spring, actually uh, the aftermath is what is more important. Because the, after, the aftermath of Arab Spring is that uh, actually trigger the populist politics. Why? Uh, because the endure resistance uh, towards the secular nationalist politics of the Middle East now is manifested in the form of familial, tribal, regional, and sectarian sentiments. Why? Because, uh, like for example, the ISIS feel the vacuum because uh, after the authoritarian regime uh, was taken down, the problem is not like automatically resolved because the new regime was seen as failing to resolve uh, the current situation because the poverty is still everywhere and people, ordinary people, is still struggling uh, and still surviving from daily to day, uh, from day to day life. Uh, they are still uh, striving. They are still uh, starving. They still they are still like experiencing the social injustice. So that's why where the vacuum is happening, there are movement uh, taken by, like for example, uh, the Islamist militants who offer the alternative discourse that we cannot rely on the secular nationalists. We cannot uh, rely on our hope uh, for the secular nationalists to change uh, the fate of the people. So that's why uh, the tribal uh, and also the sectarian sentiments now is replacing the nationalist senti sentiment. So that's why religion in many countries are highly politicized to gather voters, for example. It happens also in Indonesia in the presidential election 2019, when uh, the Islamic mobilization is uh, seen as the great influence for the people to make, make up their, politi uh, their political uh, affiliation, because religion is seen as the most effective instrument and also the most effective tools to mobilize people because they speaks to the heart, they speaks to the deeper and to the deepest sentiment that people have, which is their religious belief. And even for secular uh, national country like Indonesia, we are still highly depending on religion as the code of conduct because everything that we do in our daily life, uh, we often and yeah, we, are, we, we frequently always like come back to our religious belief to dictate of what is good and what is not good. So when the void is there, uh, it is very dangerous in terms of how it will become a threat to multicultural society because this kind of sentiment, ethnicity or also religion can be utilized, can be optimized to fill the void. To, to fill the void not only in the individual state, but also in the collective uh, collective state of affairs in the nation. It happens in during, sorry, not during, but after the Arab Spring, but also it happens in many countries after uh, this uh, global, the global um, movement of populists. So uh, before I 
over you to ask any question. I would like to give a very short, um, not conclusion, conclusion, but just a very short statement about what uh, populism is about. So when we are talking about uh, populism, there are at least three characteristics characteristic that we, we can discuss uh, later on that the people that we are talking since the very beginning of the session is those who feel actually left behind by the technological uh, change. They also uh, left behind by the global economy and also the, the growing inequality. They, they claim that the majority uh, who live in a nation or who live in sub country, uh, they, they, they do not experience at the, or they do not gain any privilege that the minority actually possess. So even though the populists say that the class is not something that too important uh, for, for the movement, the struggle actually is triggered by uh, these three things. They always say that claiming uh, to represent the pure people, they, they treat rights as an impediment to their conception of the majority will. So this is what we call that uh, even though the majority uh, triumph in terms of numbers, they always feel that the government and also the state uh, doesn't give uh, what they're supposed to have. There are rights that are missing uh, from them. So based on this situation, it is important yeah, in, 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 in the view of populists that the majority should struggle and the majority should fight uh, for their rights. Why rights are important? Because when we talk about the majority rights who lead to the majority will uh, or to fulfill the majority uh, objective or goals, they, they need to have access to technology. They need to, to become uh, superior maybe in economic and politic, and they need to reduce uh, the inequality. Then they need to be treated equally to the minority who frequently like uh, being more dominant in economic and in politics. So uh, that's why when we are talking about the majority will, it will, uh, it will lead us to the ideological opposites, which are the elitism and pluralism. So the populism often see elitism as the enemy because it is the elite that uh, should be the target of the movement because the elite is the one who should responsible for the inequality. And also pluralism, why pluralism? Because pluralism, like a state of affairs or ideology, ideological perspective that sees the minority is having the same right as the majority. So this view is neglected and also this view cannot be accepted by the populist because the minority doesn't have the same right with the majority. We cannot treat uh, the minority uh, the same as we treat majority because the majority will is more important uh, from the minority. And the pluralism which also becoming the basis of the fundamentals for democracy actually will be a threat to the majority will. So in opposite then the populist that populism can be also may be a threat for the pluralism and also the multiculturalism. And the third one is the economic grievance that are framed in ultranational perspective are uh, also often uh, to be utilized as the political instrument and also often frame in national in I would not say nationalist perspective, but ultranationalist pers perspective, which is mostly sectarian and also more tribal than secular nationalist, because uh, they are trying to to propose the argument that the national interest should be uh, handled or should be uh, tackled by 
the majority, the, the national property, and also maybe like the national resources, like the natural resources, and also other economic resources, should be managed by uh, the nation. So the foreign intervention should be limited. So the foreign uh, penetration, maybe we can use the word imperialism to symbolize the foreign intervention to one's country should be abolished because uh, it is the right for the nation to decide uh, the fate of uh, the nation itself, not other countries. So uh, this characteristic, at least these three characteristics, uh, will give us an idea what populism is and why populism can be a threat to multiculturalism. But maybe we can also discuss about the potential or maybe a more optimistic view about how populism can be also uh, be regarded as something that can be used to change a uh, situation or condition or in other words, we can think about what is the progressive um, progressive character of populism. So this is like the introduction about what populism is. Before I move on to relate how uh, populism can be used as a perspective to see uh, the pandemic or maybe the COVID-19. And I will continue also with giving you some example about what happened in Indonesia, but I will give you a chance to post a questions or maybe any comment about uh, this material so far. Or if you are not clear about what I'm saying, maybe I'm too fast or maybe I'm too, maybe talking too general about these things, don't worry, just say your, your mind, just say your thought, then I can respond to that. So is there any, is there any, any, any response uh, to this, to this uh, materi material? Sorry. Yeah, I have yeah. one question. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which Amiru, one actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah. one actually sparked the Arab Spring? Is it like uh, because of Khalid Said or the vendor that burned himself in front of a government building? In the video, one. yeah, yeah, in Tunisia. Yeah. Yeah. So the Tunisia, uh, yeah. which one? The Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So the Tunisia uh, which came one first actually because... spark? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Uh, which one so, actually uh, sparked the mm -hmm. Arab Spring? Okay, yeah, thank you, Amiruddin. Uh, well, actually, it came first in Tunisia uh, with the man who burned himself because when he tried to sell, uh, when he tried to sell something, he was like also uh, the police stopped him because uh, the police said that he didn't pay like the tax or maybe he need to pay something, but the man didn't pay and he already offered to pay uh, the, the fine. But when he tried to file uh, the case, uh, he was refused by the, by the local justice. And then uh, to demonstrate uh, his frustration, he burned himself. It happens in Tunisia. And then not long after that, uh, the same or similar incident also happens in Egypt where the Egyptian man, uh, the Khaled Said, or also like experiencing the same thing. And when he, when, when, when he, he was beaten to, uh, to death, uh, the witnesses of the, of the incident uh, created uh, the Facebook group. So when you said which one who initiate uh, the Arab Spring, I think uh, the first case happens in Tunisia with the man who burned himself uh, in front of the, the, the yeah the local uh, the local yeah government office. Yeah, uh, I have another question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, do you think that without social media, will the, the Arab Spring happen? Okay, that's a very nice question, and I would like to hear uh, other students maybe to 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 respond to that question because I think that's a very important question in relation to our uh, uh, course material about multiculturalism and also how the role of media and also how the role of technology to, to, yeah, to motivate or maybe to become uh, one driving force behind the movement. Is there anyone who try or want to give the opinion? OK. 
Okay, uh, I will give yeah, yeah. some opinion. Okay. Okay, on my opinion, uh, the movement might be happening, but mm-hmm. it's not spreading too fast because, as we know, uh, technology is uh, a medium that will spread information or ideology faster. So mm-hmm. it might be spreading a little bit uh, slower, but uh, the effect might be more drastic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it be, it will first uh spreading with the in the communities yeah. where it might be uh like a huge pro- protest that might um affect the economy or the politics yeah. in the in the society. Yeah. Okay, so it's still uh it's still becoming the uh the cause, but it's not that fast because the spreading can be maybe slower, a bit slower than if it uh use the technology as a uh, means of distributing the content and also to uh, mobilizing people. Thank you for uh, your opinion. Is there any other maybe similar or different opinion? We still have time to discuss about uh, this question. So in specific, when you say like technology, uh, do you uh, refer to social media or any kind of technology, Amir? Yeah, I think social media because mm. uh, Khalid Said yeah. uses uh, Facebook, right? To yeah. you know, portray mm-hmm. the revolution. Okay. Yeah, I think social media. So social media. Yeah. Okay. Can you like uh, tell us about how your uh, uh, fellow citizen in your country use social media? With is maybe very specific in your country because uh, I'm aware that all country now is using social media for different purpose. For the people to use social media, they have different motivation. Uh, so they have different goals. They have also different objective. But maybe can you share a bit about how your country uh, deal with the emergence of social media and how it is maybe politically used or maybe socially used and for what purpose? Yeah, uh, for in Brunei Darussalam, mm-hmm. uh, the most like popular uh, way to spread information and news is oh. through WhatsApp. But however, yeah. not not a lot of the news or information will be accurate. So it's just like yeah. spreading news. And you know how social media is. It spreads like Uh, forest fire so mm-hmm. that's how we usually spread news through whatsapp oh, whatsapp yeah. Uh, uh, yeah do you think why whatsapp is more like a frequent use uh, in comparison with like facebook twitter or instagram what is the specific feature of whatsapp that you think uh, it is like more effective to spread the news because it Actually, is like more personal or, or how uh, it's WhatsApp has this thing where you can forward to lots of groups. One message can be forwarded into like uh, numerous mm. groups in one, just one click away, you know. Mm. Uh, it's, I think, and also the fact that the people that send the news might be uh, the people that you know. But mm. the news itself, we don't know if it's true or correct. That's the yeah. problem, yeah. Mm. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you. Is there is anyone also experiencing the same thing with your uh, country, with your fellow friend or citizen in your country? Maybe from France, Malaysia? Do you have also the same or maybe a bit different experience? Maybe in Malaysia, how, how, is, how, how, how is the use of WhatsApp or other social uh, media platform? What is the most popular in Malaysia? In Malaysia, uh, the most popular is WhatsApp also, and be- WhatsApp also. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the commission, the multimedia commission, had made a, a, a law or restriction where they uh, unapproved or unauthorized mm-hmm. information, and the the person will be traced mm-hmm. and will be fined mm-hmm. directly mm-hmm. in the court. Okay. The uh, yeah, um, when the law is enforced, but mm-hmm. still, uh, p- uh, there are a lot of person doing that, especially in this uh coronavirus uh pandemic. Okay, 
so what, what kind of information that you usually uh, seen uh, in relation to coronavirus pandemic? What kind of maybe or this information that is like often distributed due uh, to pandemic? Is it like maybe in Indonesia we all we we often uh, uh, saw information about the conspiracy theory and is is there also something happen in your country? There's uh, there's uh, once uh, in Johor Bahru, yeah. they, uh, a woman have post a video which is uh, they say that uh, the video had shows that uh, a lot of people come out. Uh, come out in okay. a building uh, simultaneously uh, that uh, it be enforced by the military. Mm. The mission is true and uh, the police and the government have been have traced the woman and the woman is now being fined and uh, for the punishment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have questions uh, to you uh, also as a response to your questions. Um, uh, in your own country, guys, uh, 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 is there an aspect for you? Uh, not only they are experiencing the trouble uh, a way that is more unfortunate compared to other specific groups, but they are also left behind by the policy. Uh, in terms of that the government doesn't protect their rights, To, uh, to maybe uh, in specific, or is there any social class that also experienced moral or more problem during the pandemic compared to other social groups? Or in religion, is there any specific religion, whether it is like crisis. But before I show you this, I was made, like experiencing worse than other groups. Uh, for, Especially during the time yeah, like uh, for mm -hmm. In Brunei, I don't think there's any inequality, but mm -hmm. the public doesn't really know if there's mm -hmm. uh, inequality because mm -hmm. the media in Brunei senses everything so whatever uh about bad news i won't okay. go to the public because it's getting censored yeah uh, the media here is really okay. uh, very uh, strict um yeah and uh, about minorities and stuff i think in my own experience uh there's no uh, inequalities mm. in the society mm. like as i can see everyone is treated equally mm, okay. yeah Okay, that's from Brunei. Yeah. Also, maybe uh, in France, how is uh, Maud and also Clement? Do you have something to to share with others in relation to maybe the minority groups or any unfortunate groups? Yes, I can say that. I think mm -hmm. uh, it was the same for everyone. Uh, maybe just mm -hmm. at the beginning, uh, or where some people were scared about. Uh, uh, Asian tourists, maybe, or in particular, mm. Chinese tourists. Mm. tourists. In mm. Paris, we, we have a lot of yeah. uh, tourists, you know, mm. all over the world. But we saw some news about uh, people were maybe avoiding those people in the streets. But it, it didn't last uh, very long. It was just a few days, I guess, because uh, we, we knew carrying mm. this virus with them. Mm. So I don't think it was, uh, people were scared about uh, some people more than others. It was the same for everyone. Uh, also, mm. friends, we don't really use WhatsApp. Mm. Um, okay. Maybe we 
you will use a messenger messenger from uh, Facebook. Oh, okay. But uh, not so it's more popular. Yeah. Not WhatsApp. Okay. But yeah. Thank you. Uh, how about in Malaysia? In Malaysia, I think the uh, uh, the government has take a uh, good initiative in uh, taking care of the uh, people that have been um, that have been in pandemic, such as the unemployed, uh, where they oh. take all the unemployed and place it into uh uh what a hall and then they take taking care of their food children and they're also running their their tests their tests there mm. so the okay. government have done uh sadly uh if you are a, a poor people uh there is not uh what to get because as uh, as the um, movement, uh, what we call in Malaysia PKP, is a restriction mm -hmm. movement in Malaysia. Restriction movement order in Malaysia. It had been uh, uh, released. So a uh, movement uh, give chance for the people to go out and uh, doing their mm -hmm. daily routine. Uh, for the poor people, they are going to the uh, pawn shop to pawn some to pawn their mm. uh, their or and um, I have no jobs and they might be uh, Hello, Arif. I can. Yeah, hello. Hi. Sorry. Hello. Yeah, but I can get. Uh, a minute after. Yeah. The. Wait, uh, I will share my uh, screen again. Maybe I will respond to your opinion of uh, during my screens also. Sorry, guys. So, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you can, you can uh, view the screen, uh, the slide? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, there are big concern about what uh, life uh, will be after the coronavirus, after the pandemic of COVID-19. So these three, uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, from the literature that I read and also from some news and also from my own thought that what populists may do during the pandemic of COVID-19. Well, I, I actually already like, so I'm still having uh, some PowerPoint slides, but... Uh, because of the time limitation, then I will jump off to this uh, slide. So there are three concerns that maybe uh, in in response also to your uh, to your opinions, uh, and thank you for that. Uh, there are three uh, problems that we we may face uh, after the corona during or after the coronavirus. Uh, in terms of populism and the populist movement the exploiting the economic frustration can be uh, a good tool for the public because people uh, started questioning about how they will survive about how they will like uh, handling their economic uh, crisis because some of us, some of uh, them are losing the job and also they don't have any idea how they will like, continue their life after, the, after, after this uh, crisis. So uh, the economic uh, grievance, uh, grievance, sorry, the economic grievance can be politically used uh, to pose some 
political agenda that will appeal to uh, those who experience the economic frustration. So I hope you, you get my point, situation in relation to, uh, to the COVID-19. Then it is easier for politicians, it is easier for the political actors to propose the agenda, the political agenda that appeals to those who experience uh, the economic frustration. So we, we need to be like aware uh, that this problem may happening, maybe not after the coronavirus, but maybe now that there are policy, that there are government's uh, regulation or maybe rules that will be developed uh, based on uh, this this problem, how the exploitation of the economic frustration. And the second problem is the blaming. Uh, blaming to speak on behalf of the majority, they may, they may blame the minority for the crisis. So we already heard maybe from social media, only in Asia, maybe, maybe also in France, maybe it, 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 it doesn't happen a lot uh, in Brunei, uh, apparently, uh, but maybe also in Malaysia. But in Indonesia, there are already like a blaming uh, that the crisis is happening because the maybe we can see like but it is the economic and the social injustice that make the problem worse. So the COVID-19 and also the coronavirus is not the only problem, it's not the biggest problem, but the economic injustice is the problem. And I actually agree with that because uh, before, before the COVID-19, we already like experiencing the economic uh, injustice, but we need to be very careful in, 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 in analyzing how this issue, how this discourse uh, will around ability to solve the problem because it was counter problem. So uh, the second one, the blaming game, should be something that we aware of because it can be politicized by the uh, the uh, by any actors. So the third problem is dividing, uh, dividing the people because I already talked about how the categorization, uh, the, category, the categorization, and also the classification can like put people in the hierarchy and it can potentially divide the people. And it can be also used to reduce policy by listening to what really mean uh, people will start to claim their rights. I'm the majority, so I have something that should be belong to me. Maybe the minority will do the same also. You cannot treat me as a minority because I am also the citizen. So I have something that belongs to me as the citizen. So the opposition between the majority and the minority doesn't matter because we are all the people. We are all the citizen of Indonesia in my example. The questions about what actually belongs to the people, what actually belongs to the individuals, what actually belongs to the subject will, will be there. So when we are aware of these three problems, the exploiting, the blaming, and also the dividing, then we need to think more carefully, we need to contemplate, we need to reflect when this is about to happen, then what should we do about that? So it leads me to the, uh, sorry. Nah, uh, uh, Buyun, can, can I still have some more time to explain some Yeah, example? sure, you can. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys, maybe I will take like more five or 10 minutes uh, 
to continue this, uh, this, oh, sorry, this PDF. So uh, I will give you some example. It happens in, in Hungarian uh, because the prime minister of the Hungary said that the Hungarian, ex uh, no, no, this is not the news. So these things that I would like to show you, uh, the fact is that Hungarian expelled a group of Iranian students and they made a point by saying that the government is focused on saving the lives of the Hungarian people. So this is a narrative uh, that is produced and also, of course, uh, distributed and spread uh, by the government to the Hungarian people. Don't worry, for Hungarian people, I will save your life that you are in, that you are in the good hand that the problem will not overcome, but we are, the government will overcome the problem and the Hungarian, the death of the Hungarian people is in a good hand. But what about the immigrant? What about the refugee? Or what about uh, some people who also live in Hungary, but they are not students, are already expelled uh, from the country because of the reason that we have priority and our priority is the Hungarian people. So you can imagine how, if in a country, maybe in my own example, which is Indonesia, when there are groups of people who are uh, above other groups because of the ethnicity, because of the uh, religion, because of their religion, because of their other identity, and they are the group that consider as the more important uh, group of people that need to be saved first before other groups. So I will not say which group uh, that is uh, like given the, the, the priority about the, the saving, uh, how to save, how to, to, how, to, uh, how to make a sacrifice, how to, how to make a what, how to compromise with the latest situation. But uh, people do act differently. And also people, we need, to, we need to see that there are some policy and there are some, uh, some uh, treatment that is not uh, directed uh, to the same, uh, sorry, not to the same, that there are some priority and there are some uh, policy that may that may be experienced differently by different group and i will show you one more example oh sorry this is still the uh, the hungary so uh, this this statement i think it is interesting because the prime minister say that we are fighting a two front war one front is called migration so he already identified the war the first war is called migration and the other one belongs to the coronavirus. There is a logical connection between the two as both spread with movement. So the prime minister of Hungary like already explicitly said that the coronavirus and also the migration is similar, is, equally, is, is equal. So coronavirus is the problem. Migration is also the problem. So, Coronavirus is not more important than the migration because the migration is already a huge problem for the Hungary. So the logical connection between the two, that the two are the problem and both spread with movement and we need to tackle those problems. It also happened in Indonesia, but in a different way because today, uh, yeah, I think today I just saw and read the news that in national.tempo.co, it's one of online uh, sites uh, in, in Indonesia. And one of the news said that the Indonesian House of Representatives, uh, this statement is said by the member of Indonesian House of Representatives. And the news said that the Indonesian House of Representatives asked the Ministry of Religion to pay attention to the fate of religious leaders, which is a kiai and dai during the pandemic period. So when when the member of the House of Representatives said that the fate of religious leaders, it explicitly said that the religious leaders is uh, 
coming from only one specific religion, which is Islam. So when uh, the member of the House of Representatives said that the Ministry of Religion should pay attention to the faith of religious leaders, which is the Islamic religious leaders, what about the other religious leaders? What about the what about the other profession? What about the other careers? What about the other unfortunate situation that also is experienced by uh, by 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 other groups? Uh, where should more attention to these uh, groups, which is the religious leaders? What about what about uh, Workers leader. So this is very interesting because even though in Indonesia to be a populist, of course, to be a populist, but the way of thinking, the narrative, and also the discourse is already like pool. So as you can read uh, from the screen. This is like the example also the populist way of thinking that when we talk about the people, when we talk about the identity, it always is that it refers to the uh, majoritarian, it refers to the dominant groups of the society. And the dominant Followers, if you want to gain uh, sympathy from the voters, if you want to gain sympathy from the society, then use the religious narrative. Because the religious narrative is true. If you want to make it appealing to the Islamic society or Islamic uh, uh, community, then you need to, to, to offer something to them. You need to be their hero. You need to act more more patriotic by by saying that i will save save the muslim community i will save the faith and i will i will fight for the faith of the religious leaders because i'm care i, I care about the, the the religious community in indonesia so it, it it is more apparent it is more uh of uh obvious that the the, the religious narrative or the religion as a discourse may be useful for may, may be and i am confident that it is useful for the populist movement and also for the populist uh, politicians which make us to question about how is the fate of the multiculturalism how is the fate of the pluralist society in indonesia and also in malaysia and also in brunei and also in france so that's why i have like to 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 well, I will close uh, the session, but there are three, three questions that maybe some of you can give your quick opinion and quick thought. First, uh, is there any emancipatory and progressive objectives when we talk about uh, populism? And the second one, can populism be democratic? And the third one, how to build inclusive and pluralistic system? We don't have much time to discuss uh, the, the, the whole uh, and all the questions, but I would like you to pay more attention to build inclusive and pluralistic system in a democratic uh, nation, or even though we live in a democratic uh, nation, with many ideology that are competing, that are involved in a perplex network of power, then how can we still survive? Or at least how can we still be sure that the pluralistic system will be what the dominant uh, system that should be governed the society? So, but how, in a practical way, how to build this inclusive and pluralistic system? Is there any of you who, who want to share a very quick thought about this? Because, yeah, maybe we still have like two or three minutes. But not Bu Yuyun, because Bu Yuyun will conclude. <laughs> so others should like give their opinion <laughs> about this. So how? And no, no, I just give to uh, the opportunity to the rest of you to uh, respond uh, to the question of, um, of the speaker before I conclude. Uh, uh,
yeah. the speaks that uh, deliver by Candy here. Maybe if, uh, Fatin, Fatin, do you have something in your mind? Maybe you have any opinion about that? Or oh, maybe not? Nina. Yeah. Only the third question, how to build the inclusive and pluralistic system with the competing ideologies uh, in a... Yeah, we are, we are not still so, confident that uh, we are living in the pluralist, yeah. I think the most important thing is leadership. Who are uh, the leader that will govern the, gov govern the nation? Because through leader, through a good leadership, they can plan and find a solution to prevent any populist to give protest and so on. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yes, the fairness and it's very important. And so I think it is, yeah, I think I agree with you about how to, to have a good leader. So, what what kind of uh, what features you find or that you are looking from the leaders? What kind of character? What kind of feature? What kind of factor that you are looking from the leaders? fairness? Like mm. they give equality to all the nation, no matter the re the the uh, from what religion, races, and mm. I think just okay. these most important things for to be for a leader to okay. govern yes. the country. Justice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone, maybe one or two more? I think um, yeah. uh, the, the society of the nation must uh, be avoid from the uh, racial phobia, Raci mm. uh, racist. Racism, mm. because uh, mm. because of the racism, uh, we cannot be plural. We cannot be mm. in one society mm. because uh, we keep blaming others about something that happened uh, that mm. might not happen because of them, but they are still blaming. No, oh, okay, mm. okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Maybe one more. There are many more. more. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One more. more. <laughs> Fatin, Nur Farah, Azwani, or Izati, Nur Izati. Any thoughts that you need to express? No. Okay. Then. Okay then. Okay. So I think yeah. Um, I think I would like to underline the things that um. We have already heard from Kandi today that uh, now we see the big picture of the crisscrossing between the multiculturalism, the role of the social media, and also the populism. And one more thing is that uh, the current situation, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Previously, we have no, no idea how these four things can be related or connected to one another. But with the explanation from Kandi, we knew that there are close relations between them. That um, I guess I would like to um, the things that I would like that that I would like to say is that um, when I heard the self-immolation of um, Khalid Said, um, you ca you cannot really imagine that it actually contagious. That there mm -hmm. were one. Um, action as well in Indonesia, protesting the same, not protesting the same thing, but protesting the majority uh, with the same action, self-immolating in front of the um, palace in Jakarta. So it kind of like contagious and um, through what way that it is contagious? Through social media, of course. So in, in this way, we see the role of the media, particularly social media, um, in spreading out the ideology of of the people it's a bold claim that we need to be careful of um using this term because again Gandhi already explained it it implies a lot a lot of things it's somehow a claim 
um, that made by some small groups that cannot be represented the rest of the uh, groups, but it can also um, be uh, represent, rep representing the rest of the society when it comes to have the um, common um, enemy, such as the majority in economic um, or the uh, politics. So I think that's it that I would like to uh, conclude. And I would like to say thank you very much for uh, you. your time. Kandi and also Clemen, Nur Izati, Amiruddin, yeah, Sufi, Nina, Mohd, Fatin, Nur Farah, Azwani, as well as Khalis, who spent like um, more than like one hour, and a, uh, one hour and a half to discuss about the importance of looking out the crisscrossing between populism, social media, uh, multiculturalism, as well as the current situation of coronaviruses. So again, thank you very much, Kandi, for your yeah, time. Thank you, thank you very much for your I really enjoyed it. And I, Bye -bye. Good luck with yeah, studies. and I would like oh. to say, stay safe, stay healthy, stay at home until this pandemic over and we come back to the normal or the new normal. I don't know who can say that. It is the new normal. Yeah. So again, thank you very much. Uh, okay, good you. afternoon Bye. for Andy, thank for Clement, you. and good evening for all of the rest of you from Brunei and Malaysia. Yeah. Okay, thank you. See ya. Okay. Bye. Bye, bye, guys. Bye. -bye.